last, wait a minute Lately I don't even pay no visits I can still hear the hated critics Saying he ain't gon' make it, is he? Lately I develop laser vision Yeah, I burn through people in their cruel intentions Crazy, you tryna play me? Boy, you wouldn't even make the scrimmage Get your ass up and pass up your limits Got these new rappers looking vintage All I really do is eat spinach Count money up and hang with pretty women I was driven, yeah, I had the vision Then goon came along and made a vivid Haters living cause we really living I'm a freight train, you a Honda Civic Hold up, wait, let me get specific If you pick a mission and you stay committed Stop transmitting and you really listen You'll see that big collision just a big transition When it all goes down I'm gonna run this set What's up guys, this is Brandon aka Multi-Level Media In this video I wanted to break down my editing timeline for the cinematic edits that I've been releasing Show you guys um, the back end, how we edit that um, Go through some of the effects, the transitions and sound effects used in the video Everything that I'm doing, um, whether I'm using Final Cut, Premiere, uh, DaVinci Resolve, um, everything that I do in the, these videos um, is possible in any editing platform. Got a little scruffy in Africa, started uh, growing this beard. So don't be discouraged if you know I'm not using the same platform that you are. Um, I want to make sure that you guys are prepared and comfortable to shoot, shoot a video like this in the future. Um, if you haven't already, like, subscribe and turn on the post notifications for any videos that we have dropping in the future. Uh, make sure that you're notified and keep up with our content. Um, let's go ahead and jump into the editing platform and timeline. So now that we're here in Final Cut Pro or your editing application of choice, um, everything's gonna be pretty similar, whether you, again, like I said, if you're using Final Cut, uh, Premiere Pro, DaVinci da Resolve, um, whatever it is, as long as you have um, different masking tools and familiar with keyframing, um, you should have enough to, to get started and make some pretty good um, cinematic fitness videos. Um, so for this video, I just wanted to start breaking down um, and I'll kind of go through the timeline, show you guys what uh, changes and what how I edited this. Um, and I'll, I'll go through some special effects. And if there's if there's anything at the end of the video that I missed that you guys want me to um, do a detailed tutorial on, um, certainly let me know. Uh, there's also two videos, two different outfits that we shot. Um, so if you see anything in those videos that you want me to break down in detail, um, certainly put that in the comments down below and I will make sure to get to that. Um, so shooting a video like this, um, all my shots are not great. Uh, every shot that I took, you know, could be five to 10, 15 seconds long, but I might only be using a half a second, one second, two seconds of that clip. So regardless of this shot, you just want to make sure that you get the perfect shot within, uh, that, that duration of you recording. So, um, that's why we're editing. So we're going to pull out our best shots and make sure that we we get those um, perfect golden shots that we, we really want to capture, but we'll edit that in at the end. So um, starting here, the first thing we did was we shot the garage door opening up, so that allowed us to reveal uh, the gym and our subject the and the, the outfit that we chose to shoot for this scene. So we overlaid the logo. Um, I did do a mask here um, to have that logo disappear as the garage goes up. So um, I can get into detail on this, but this is uh, pretty much going to be like a high level review of, of the whole edit. So for this part, um, as the garage goes up, you'll see that the logo disappears here and then we reveal the gym and our subject. Uh, for this one, we had to mask out, so uh, I did use a draw mask. So you'll see the draw mask. I also put in transform control points, and we keyframed all those individual points. So you'll see, as we move through the timeline, you're gonna see, <clears throat> once we hit the bottom of that garage, you will go ahead and see our control points, so our X and Y axis. You're gonna see that change as the logo disappears within the garage. Uh, 
So over here to the right, you'll see our position, our X and Y axis on all of our points, as well as the general position of the logo um, is going to change with that garage. Um, so that's how we created that intro. You'll see throughout my timeline, you'll see a lot of speed ramping. Um, so speed ramping is just when you speed up a clip and slow it down, depending on how you're editing with the music. So you'll see that I speed ramped that clip to come in, um, as well as here we did do a speed ramp for um, revealing these pants and the logo here. We threw in a flash, so you'll see that lighting. Um, so we used, for Final Cut, we used side lights. I'm sure um, you can use different lighting effects um, for for uh, Premiere Pro or DaVinci or, or whatever, even iMovie might have um, some sort of um, lighting that you can play with just to enhance and, you know, bring out focus on on that logo or, or whatever you're trying to emphasize in the clip. Following that, um, we had her warm up, so we did a couple different stretches here. Whenever you're shooting something like this, a gym video or, you know, anything active, um, make sure that you, you you keep the camera moving. So you, you, you want continuous movement, whether you're on a gimbal or handheld. If you're, if you're handheld, um, you can always support uh, the camera with your chest or if you have a strap, uh, the more contact points, the, the, sta the more stable your shot's going to be. Um, but in this shot, I did use a Zion crane. So we did use a gimbal for some of these shots. Um, so after we had her stretch, then we get into the workout. So here, um, a similar mask to what we did with the, the intro with the logo. Um, when she came out of frame here, we we drew a mask we keyframed all the control points um, and the those transforms and as well as that scale so <clears throat> as the clip is coming across um, you'll see that here's my draw mask so <clears throat> if we zoom it out you'll see that i drew this mask and keyframed it and for this one, I did invert the mask. So you'll see here that checkbox is uh, checked off for the invert mask. So that pretty much means that um, whatever I mask out, it's going to either be black. So if I turn this clip off, you know, it's going to be black and then it's going to reveal whatever clip is beneath it. So let me turn that back on and you'll see that this is the main clip. So this is the clip that we shot uh, as this bar, as we came across this bar, I used that as a masking point. And then this clip below is the clip that's actually being seen um, on the other side of this mask. All right. Um, so if you guys want uh, detailed information on masking, uh, let me know, but it, it's pretty straightforward. Just need to, know how to draw the mask and control those um, transform control points through keyframing. After this clip, uh, we just had her, we, we had her take off this, this hoodie about, you know, three or four times. So she was putting it on, taking it off, putting it on. I was switching up my angles, different, getting different shots. Um, you always want to switch up the perspective, get different angles, um, if you're outside, it's awesome to get a drone shot if you have any um, access to drones or, or any aerial <clears throat> cameras. Um, but inside, you know, I only use the drone for one clip um, just in the open area in, in the beginning of the uh, gray and green outfit. Um, okay, so again, the shirt, we had her take it off several times, switching up angles. Um, pretty straightforward, easy to get this, just got to chop it up, make sure that when you're editing, you put everything in order um, and chop it up. You're only using a, you know, a half second, a second here, um, chop it up, make sure that you keep the audience engaged um, right here. This took a, a couple times here. So 
Um, we had her take off the shirt and then toss it over the camera lens. Um, so you just got to coordinate that with your subject. Um, make sure that she knows what she's doing and, and where you want the shot to be. So kind of direct your subject. And um, we had her throw it right on the camera. Um, and then I just did a crossfade. So I did a cross dissolve here. Um, and then that brings us into our next shot. Um, this was pretty cool. Uh, we started, you know, in front of her and then came back through the legs. And then we revealed um, the subject and kind of the scene here. So that came out good. Um, any Anytime you want to use like a blackout, if you're, you know, going to the floor or even mixing in the sky, uh, just make sure that whatever whatever it is, the shot that you um, end it with is a similar color. Um, that way you can, you know, cross dissolve and have it, um, you know, sync very smoothly in the edit. Again, um, doing the squats, it's, it's pretty much just going around her, getting as many angles as possible. You'll see here that, you know, I got got the uh, barbell in focus here and then it pulls out and I focus on her. Um, so, you know, utilize your F stop, try to try to get some cool shots with low aperture. When I first started, I was doing a lot of wide shots. I wasn't moving too much, um, just following the subject, but that's not what you want to do. You want to, you want to utilize, you, you know, low aperture, you want to try to get some depth of field. You want to move around. You want to do close-ups, wide shots, um, you know, mid shots. You want to do super close-ups. Try to get a lot of detail. Uh, mix it up and keep that. Keep the viewer, um, who, whoever's watching your content, keep them really, you know, excited for the next shot. You got to keep switching up. But yeah, I would definitely recommend um, using a lower aperture. That'll definitely help out with. Uh, making your, your clips a lot more, uh, a lot more impressive to the viewer, but also, um, you know, keep, keeps their attention span there. Um, give, gives it a nice, uh, cinematic type look. Um, so, you know, again, just switching it up, getting a bunch of different angles, as you see here, moving with the subject. So instead of just sitting there with a wide shot, you know, I, I had the gimbal, I had everything lined up. Uh, make sure that you have your, your composition, make sure your subjects, you know, as center as possible and then move with her. So, you know, you'll see me moving down um, again, moving up with her. So just move with your subject. If, if you're doing a side shot and she's running, jogging, doing some some sort of agility type training, um, make sure that you run with her, you know, make, mix it up, make make the make a really cool perspective on the shot. Um, move, move with the movements. If she's doing bicep curls or, or shoulder, you know, follow the dumbbell, follow the movement. Um, so after squats, you'll see there it's shaking a little bit. I put, I think I put an earthquake and effect on this. Um, trying to, trying to mix it up a little bit. A lot of these shots I run and, and stabilize. Um, so you don't want everything too smooth. Um, so yeah, you'll see there, I, I put that earthquake effect and it's just, it's, it's nothing dramatic. It's just a little bit to get, give a little bit of a camera movement there for us. Um, here we just used a twitch down transition. Um, so that's just going to pop us down into the next clip. Um, you'll see, I'll go through the sound effects, but here I put a whoosh sound. Um, but I'll run through the, all these sound effects um, after we get through the timeline. And if, if anybody needs links or um, wants any download files to some of these uh, custom transitions that I implemented into Final Cut, let me know. And I'll, uh, I'll be sure to, you know, create a, uh, a shared folder and, and um, put a download link in the description there for you. Another clip here. Um, so this one, I actually did a draw mask because I was trying to add the, it's like an RBG split effect on the logo, trying to emphasize that logo in this clip. 
Um, so I just masked that out and then put that the RGB glitch. It's like a prism effect um, on that clip. And this this M cam rig that's just gonna help us zoom in. So you know a wider shot and then it zooms into the logo um, and then we push out. So um, if you can see the clip without that, it's just a wide shot. So that um, kind of brings us in on the subject and and emphasizes that logo. All right, so now we jump into some side lateral um, shoulder moves. Um, again, just moving up with the subject. Um, just getting as much movement, switching up those angles. Got a tight shot. Again, another uh, M cam rig movement. So that's going to zoom us in. I was trying to show some, you know, some striations and veins in, in her shoulders there. Trying to get some detail. Again, another twitch down transition. And when I when I twitch it down, right, so it's going down. I also kept the camera movement on the clip that was following in a downward motion. Um, if you're moving forward, you do want the, the following clip to move forward as well. If you're moving right, you want that that next clip to to move with that shot and move right as well. Moving left, you know, the next clip should move left. You don't want to film left and then the following clip goes right or you film a clip moving up with a pan up and then the next clip pans down. Um, it looks a lot more fluent when you um, sync up your shots in a similar movement or direction. All right, again, she's just bringing up, putting the barbell on her head, switch it up. You see a couple different angles there. Got a close up. Um, you'll see that I did speed ramp these, so there is some speed ramping when you actually watch it full through. Pan up. Here, uh, this was a, this looks like it could be a drone shot, but this was actually a gimbal shot. So I did keep this and you'll see that I did speed ramp it. Boom. All right, so this one, this one's cool, and this uh, this effect is used a lot in fitness videos. Um, so if you come out with a wide shot, speed ramp it up, and then make a quick cut. So um, we start out wide. This is actually normal, speed ramped. You'll see that this clip is speed ramped, and then we go back to a normal clip. I use that M cam rig, so that gave us that zoom effect. Zoom, you can pretty much zoom anywhere on the clip. It's just a slight, um, slight movement there, but make sure that you center it where you need it to zoom. Um, and then we did a, so I'm panning in. So if you pan in, you can also pan in a specific direction. So panning in, and I use this swish left followed by movement in that same direction okay so make sure that you you know you're just following the same movement because um, if you if you go left or right or up and down you know you're, you're confusing the viewer it's not very fluent all right again here we go switching up a bunch of different angles pretty much same shot we had her go back and forth you know three or four different times switching up the angles on you know each take here and she's just running through the movements just switching it up pretty straightforward just switch it up every couple seconds um, so what 35 and 37 so within two seconds we got you know, one, two, three, four, you know, five, almost five different, five different angles and different perspectives on, you know, a couple steps over two seconds of the timeline. Um, so just make sure that you're jump cutting a lot of, a lot of clips here. Um, so this one, I wanted to transition from the, the, uh, barbell lunges to the, uh, kettlebell flies here or kettlebell swings sorry um and i wanted it to be i wanted there to be some some sort of impact 
sorry. And switching it up here from the barbell lunges to the kettlebell swings, I wanted there to be some sort of um, impact here. So I did use this spiral twitch. It's like a little um, like earthquake twitch movement. Um, and then, you know, straight into her pulling this one up. Um, so once she was into place, again, we switch up the, ca the camera movements and, and different perspectives and angles here. So, you know, again, over a couple seconds, we got, you know, five, six, seven different angles here. For this one, this was cool. So you want to, you want to, if, if you're going to try to focus in on a specific part of the video and, you know, it's, it's not the, it's not in the, the position that you want it. You can plan this ahead. So maybe I, I'll have her put the dumbbell or the kettlebell or, you know, her foot or her foot or her foot or her um, hand or, you know, what, whatever it is that you're trying to focus on. Have that in place. Catch your manual focus, focus everything, dial it in and then have her make that movement. So, you know, everything's in focus where you need it to be, but you just let her make that movement to push whatever it is into focus um, another trick that I use a lot is, you know, if I, if I make a movement or I get a clip and it's, it's not exactly how I wanted it or in the, you know, the direction that I wanted it, as long as it's not walking or, you know, doing something very strange that you can't reverse, um, I would go ahead and reverse a clip. Um, that's a great way to, to make a shot or, you know, if you're, if you're making a camera movement and it doesn't go in sync, like left moving left or right moving right. Um, as long as the clip won't look terrible reversed, you can always switch it up and reverse it, um, in final cut. And I'm sure premiere pro and, and even Da Vinci probably have another an effect that you can use here as well. Um, so if, you know, if for some reason this clip was here and then we shot the next clip and it was um, from a different angle where it needed to be flipped, um, you can always switch up the clip and use like a flipped effect. So, you know, if you needed to, um, you know, use that flip effect as long as it doesn't look too funky. Um, I don't see why not. So I've used that actually a couple times in this video and, and even the other edits. All right, so going through our kettlebell swings, again, close-up shots, movement. Uh, be sure to try to stay out of the mirror. It looks like I'm in the mirror a little bit here, but um, yeah, watch out for mirrors, especially when you're shooting in a gym. <laughs> but um, so again, movement, movement with the subject, following her down, you know, coming across. This was cool. So we staged this one. So I had her pull up the barbell and hold it. As she held it, I went around with the gimbal. And then I told her, I directed her to go, as in, you know, drop it down once I was into position. Um, and then we did the same thing. So coming up from this side, I had her, I followed her up with the movement. And then this one, you know, same deal. I followed her, tried to keep her as center as possible throughout the whole movement and come down. So I just direct her to come down with, with the camera movement once I'm in position. Um, and you'll see that this one's speed ramped. I also put a prism effect. Um, and then you'll see the sound effects here. So we finish that off with a gunshot. Um, I used an effect from Lens Distortion. They have a, a ton of great sound effects. So I would definitely check out Lens Distortion if you need any additional uh, impacts or, um, you know, cinematic sound effects. They are great. I put in a, a small little swoosh there as well. So if we drop off the sound or the um, track, you can see our sound effects here. So I got that swish effect, bringing in that, that speed ramp. 
and then we got a little bit of uh, like Foley sounds for, from that lens distortion file, and then we finish it off with that um, loud shotgun noise. Uh, again, so we got all our sound effects, another use of lens distortion. I got a couple swooshes, whooshes. Um, I, I even use like swords or, you know, anything like risers that create like a unique um, feeling of like anticipation or if it if it follows with a clip at just adds and emphasizes the movement. Um, it doesn't necessarily need to, you know, match with exactly what you're doing. Um, even if you, you use a sound effect and then put it in slow motion or even reverse sound effects, you can come up with so many different types of sounds that, you know, the, you wouldn't typically think that, you know, a shotgun would be in a, uh, a fitness video or a sword or, you know, some cinematic riser, but, you know, there's ways to implement these sounds and, you know, make them sound great and emphasize what, what you're visually seeing on the screen. Um, and la I mean, lastly here, we, we threw on an adjustment layer. So, um, I think in this one, we just, I, I used it very lightly. Um, so if we look here, I did use the rec 709, um, lot for this and it's very low. I think um, 0.55. So when you throw on these lots, don't go crazy. When you load them, they're going to come out at one. So that's extremely too much, too dark. Uh, it just, it looks unprofessional. It, it looks like, you know, when some, when somebody sees that, they know that you're a rookie. And I know that from personal experience, I used to do this. So, um, just be careful with those lots and, and you learn as you go. But yeah, even like 0.4, um, or let's see, I had it at 0.55, but let's see, that looks good. So it's just a little bit enough to give us some color, some, some contrast. Um, so you can see here without the LUT, with the LUT, without the LUT, with the LUT. Um, so that's it. Uh, I hope you guys learned something. I hope you can go out there and do a fitness video or, you know, some kind of health and motivational video of yourself. Um, you know, if, if you practice this enough, you know, brands will reach out to you. People, people these days need branded content. Um, so, you know, this shoot was for a clothing line, um, out in California. So they're dropping a couple, uh, new lines. We had, three different outfit, four different outfits actually. And, um, you know, we, we shot it all in a couple hours. Um, but yeah, get out there and start creating some branded content, use these tools and bring it into the field. Thanks for watching. I hope this helped. And if you guys have any questions, definitely let me know in the comments down below. I'll do my best to, you know, elaborate and, and explain whatever questions you might have. Um, otherwise we will catch you guys on the next one. you with the tools to do this on your own 
If you haven't, make sure to subscribe, give the video a like, and put on the post notifications so you're updated when we drop our next video. Yeah.